Welcome to the CSSN channel. Our topic for today is vitamin D toxicity. My name is Abu Zar Habibiniya. I have an MD degree and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sport Edition. Subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube to enjoy the information that we share on a regular basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness, and sport edition. Okay, vitamin D toxicity. There are many people out there worldwide that they take vitamin D on a daily basis. And especially because of the pandemic, they have increased their daily doses just to protect themselves and give their bodies a support. This is why we have received many questions about vitamin D toxicity. Questions such as, does vitamin D toxicity really exist? What is the daily dose of vitamin D that may lead to toxicity? What are the signs and symptoms? How to avoid it? And how is it treated in medicine if it happened? We have made this presentation to answer all these questions and for today I have created a few slides for you. I'm gonna talk on the slides and I'll be back at the end. Let's go with the slides first. Vitamin D toxicity. One of the common concerns and questions among the public and even among healthcare providers is having too much vitamin D in the body. And you may hear five different terms. Vitamin D toxicity, vitamin D intoxication, vitamin D overdose, vitamin D poisoning, and hypervitaminosis D. Actually, many experts do not believe in using the terms toxicity and intoxication. This is why recently in most uh, textbooks of pharmacology, they have started using hypervitaminosis D. And I personally believe this term makes more sense. Through this presentation, I am going to answer four important questions for you. Question one, does vitamin D toxicity really exist? Question two, what daily dose of vitamin D could lead to potential toxicity? Question three, what are the symptoms and signs? Question four, how is vitamin D toxicity treated in medicine? To answer those four questions for you, I have used the five most valid references in medicine, and I would like you to know them. Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, edition 20. This is the most famous textbook in medicine. This is the, basically the Bible of medical doctors worldwide. Goodman and Gilman's The Pharmacological Basis of Trapodics, edition 13. This is the most famous uh, textbook in pharmacology, and all pharmacists throughout the world they know this textbook well. Current Medical Diagnosis and Treatment, edition 2019, another famous uh, textbook in medicine. And Vitamin D, Physiology, Molecular Biology, and Clinical Applications, second edition by Dr. Michael Hollick. And Vitamin D by Dr. David Fillman, fourth edition. Okay, in Harrison Principles of Internal Medicine, edition 20th, on page 2316, it says vitamin D intoxication is rare and usually is caused by the uncontrolled and excessive ingestion of supplements or by faulty food fortification practices. And high plasma levels of active vitamin D and calcium are central features of toxicity. In this textbook on pages uh, 2920 and 2921, it says the safety margin for vitamin D is large and vitamin D toxicity usually is observed only in patients taking doses in the range of uh, 40,000 IU daily. So as you can see that on the most famous textbook in medicine, it says if you take 40,000 vitamin D per day or more, you may develop toxicity. So if you are having 6,000, 7,000, even 10,000 or 12,000 IU vitamin D, it should be definitely safe. In the same textbook on page 29-32, it says chronic ingestion of 40 to 100 times the normal physiologic requirement of vitamin D. That means if you take more than, as you can see in here, 40,000 to 100,000 are your vitamin D per day. If it's done, this is going to lead to significant hypercalcemia in healthy 
people. In Goodman Gilman's textbook of pharmacology, on page 895, it says, the amount of vitamin D necessary to cause hypervitaminosis varies widely. As a rough approximation, continued daily ingestion of 50,000 units or more may result in poisoning. The initial signs and symptoms of vitamin D toxicity are those associated with hypercalcemia. As you can see, based on the most famous textbook of pharmacology, if you take 50,000 are your vitamin D or more, and based on Harrison principles of internal medicine, if you take 40,000 are your vitamin D or more, you may develop vitamin D toxicity. This book on page three, it says vitamin D intoxication will not occur until the blood level of vitamin D exceeds 150 to 200 nanograms per ml. The safe upper limit for children can easily be increased to 5,000 IU of vitamin D per day, and for adults, up to 10,000 IU of vitamin D per day has been shown to be safe. In this book on page 21, it says the tolerable safe upper intake levels for children under uh, one year old should be at least 2,000 IU per day, and for children over one to 18 years old should be at least 5,000 IU per day, and for all adults, the level of a vitamin D should be at least 10,000 IU per day. In this book on page 610, it says the hardwood vitamin D could come from the long term regular intake of amounts with an average per day intake beyond 40,000 IU. As you can see, this is the same amount that we saw in the most famous textbook in medicine, Harrison Principles of Internal Medicine. That textbook suggested if you take 40,000 IU vitamin D per day or more, you may develop toxicity. And in this famous book about vitamin D, uh, also we can see that they say 40,000 IU per day or more. On page 645 in this book, it says overall the occurrence of vitamin D toxicity is very rare and the margin of safety, why? Generally, no signs of vitamin D toxicity occur until uh, basically zero vitamin D concentrations uh, passes 150 nanogram per ml or 375 nanomole per liter. In this book, in volume one on page 653, it says toxicity does not occur after cutaneous exposure to ultraviolet type B. In volume two, page 507, it says vitamin D toxicity is not a common cause of hypercalcemia. Again, in volume two on page 515, it says hypercalcemia appears to result only when vitamin D concentrations are consistently above 150 nanogram per ml or 375 nanomole per liter in normal people. Again, in volume two on page 519, you can read, vitamin D toxicity is not a common cause of hypercalcemia, but it can be life-threatening if not identified promptly. The major causes of hypercalcemia in medicine are primary hyperparathyroidism. That means someone has hyperactive parathyroid glands and cancers. Okay, let's see what are the symptoms and signs of vitamin D toxicity. But let's keep in mind the symptoms and signs of vitamin D toxicity are those associated with hypercalcemia. In medicine, to diagnose someone with vitamin D toxicity, here are the criteria. Number one, blood levels of vitamin D should be above 150 nanogram per ml or 375 nanomole per liter. Number two, blood levels of calcium should be above 10.2 milligram per deciliter. As you can see in here, normal levels of calcium is 8.2 to 
2 mg per deciliter. Mild hypercalcemia, that means if uh, blood levels of calcium is between 11 to 11.5 mg per deciliter, usually has no symptoms and is discovered on routine calcium measurements. Symptoms usually occur if blood levels of calcium passes 12 mg per deciliter. Okay, let's see what are those symptoms. Clinical signs and symptoms of hypercalcemia. Hypercalcemia can cause signs and symptoms in five different systems in the body. Central nervous system, lethargy, depression, poor concentration, confusion, stupor, changes in personality. Neuromuscular system, proximal muscle weakness, decreased tendon reflexes, gastrointestinal tract. Probably the most common sign and symptoms of hypercalcemia that comes from uh, vitamin D toxicity are those signs and symptoms related to GI system. They are constipation, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, and peptic ulcer disease. And signs and symptoms related to the kidneys, polyuria, that means uh, the person is going to pee more, polydipsia, the person is thirsty all the time, they drink more, they pee more, and kidney stone formation. And finally, cardiovascular system, high blood pressure, bradycardia, that means decreased uh, heart rate below normal ranges, and definitely some changes in ECG. Treatment of hypercalcemia for a vitamin D toxicity. Okay, let's see if someone has developed a vitamin D toxicity, which has led to hypercalcemia, how this is going to be treated in uh, medicine. Definitely, the first thing that they are going to do is this. They're going to stop taking vitamin D. And then they're going to definitely uh, give the person corticosteroids. Basically, corticosteroids are the preferred treatment. Corticosteroids, they decrease the production of active form of vitamin D in the kidneys. The corticosteroids that are used for vitamin D toxicity are intravenous hydrocortisone, 100 to 300 milligrams uh, daily for three to seven days, or oral prednisone, 40 to 60 milligrams daily for three to seven days. Other medications that uh, in medicine they could use for hypercalcemia from vitamin D toxicity are ketoconazole, chloroquine, and hydroxychloroquine. Okay, as you saw on the slides, based on the most famous and valid textbooks in medicine, if you take more than 40 to 50 thousands of your vitamin D per day, in the long term, this may lead to vitamin D toxicity, or better to say, hypervitaminosis D. So if you are taking 6,000, 7,000, or even 10,000 are you vitamin D per day, that should be safe. I really hope that you learned something interesting today because we make science easy to understand. Now you know. If you don't want to miss our next videos, you can subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube. To support us, you can share, like, or comment on this video. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.